Kathleen did an awesome presentation. Thank you, Kathleen. Uh, DJ and Lauren, please. Thank you, Pastor Renee. Um, good morning, everyone. It's great to, um, to be here to be able to share a little bit about our trip to the Philippines um, these last few weeks, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, we we're so blessed to be able to join on this trip. This was our first time to go to the Philippines for both of us. Uh, a few, several years ago when we came to Hong Kong and started coming to Lighthouse, we would hear stories and we would see um, pictures from trips and things. And um, it was always just a neat thing to, to hear about. And, and we were always excited and praying for people when they would go on these trips. But we were really excited to be able to go ourselves this time and to be able to be a part of it. Um, leading up to the trip, we really didn't know what exactly we'd be doing. Uh, neither of us have medical <laughs> experience at all. so. But we thought, we'll just go in there and, and jump in and see where we can serve. And so we started out um, a, lot more, a lot of the mornings in registration, which is the first place where people go to when they come. They have a process of different things, different steps they have to do to get to the doctor. And so registration is that first um, place where people are welcomed in. And so a lot of mornings it would be chaotic and, and busy and a lot of people or we're trying to get set, things set up and there's already a line of people and it's hot outside. But it was the place where we could have that moment to be that first face that they see in the day and to welcome them, to give them a smile, um, to tell them good morning, and just try to make their day and their experience better. And so we really enjoyed getting to, um, to be a part of that and just to greet people and welcome people and try to brighten their day a little bit as they're waiting, sometimes patiently, sometimes not, and just try to help that process go smoother. And so we really loved getting to be a part of that. And then um, I also, in the afternoons, a lot of times we would, um, things would slow down at registration, and so we would go and help in different areas and see where people had need. And so one afternoon, um, I met these young girls in this picture on the right. Um, as they came into registration with their mom and their sister needed to go see the dentist so their mom was getting registered and while they were waiting I said do you want to go be with the, with the other children because they didn't need to see the doctor or anything and you can go and sing songs and play games and so they said sure so I took them over to the children and area where um, Stephen and Pastor Renalyn were, were ministering and dropped them off there and said okay have fun and then I left and finished up some things at registration and Later that afternoon, we, we were free and they had asked us to come help, so we, we went over just to hang out with the children, see what we could do um, that day. And this little girl, um, they're sisters, but the one in the middle in my lap, she just ran up to me and seemed to cling to me for the rest of the afternoon. Um, <laughs> So we'd sing songs and I'd dance with her and, and everything and thankfully I only did that for uh, a little while. Brother Stephen had to dance and sing every day for many hours so I'm sure he was much more tired than me. But um, it was just a really sweet and special time that afternoon spending time with her and her sisters and she would talk to me and I had no idea what she was saying. I would try to get people to translate and she would just get all shy and not say it again. And So at one point we went over to the dentist area her mom was waiting outside while her sister was getting some things done and um, sat and talked to her mom and her mom would translate and tell me what she was saying um, so she was just really really sweet but more than just getting to be with them and play with them um, sing songs and and play games and things like that was getting to be there while they were sharing the love of Jesus with these children and getting to to um, see them hear about Jesus and to accept Jesus into their life and many of these places we were in a different place every day and so it was just really sweet um, really special time and on the next slide um, Later on, in, in a lot of days, I ended up being in the pharmacy and um, being in the pharmacy for most of the day a lot of the times because there was a, a need there. And so it may not sound like the most exciting area to be working in, but in, in the mornings it would be a little slow because it was kind of the last station, the last stop of where people would end up after they see the doctor and go through all the process. Then they end up at the pharmacy. And it would be really um, busy and, and things like that once we got going. It would just be... Um, person after person we'd have a stack of papers of people that needed their medicine filled and needed that and they've already been waiting you know waiting at registration then waiting at their next place and waiting at the next place so by the time they get to us they're ready to to get their things and, and to move on and so um, we'd be trying to work really fast and, and we had a great team and worked really well together and we had youth volunteers that were so great um, helping us throughout the each part of the medical mission that would um, talk to the people and explain the medicine and how to and how to use it and things like that. 
but um, I really you notice that it would be so easy to get caught up in that busyness and, and trying to get the things done and trying to write the prescriptions out for them and, and write the medicine right, make sure they're getting the right kind of medicine. We don't want to give the wrong kind, especially for the young children and um, things like that. But just I would find myself having to take a step back and take a moment and take that opportunity and realize like people are getting this medicine that they're being blessed with this medicine that they probably wouldn't have gotten before and so that was really special just to take that time in the midst of the busyness and say okay there's there's a reason and there's a purpose behind why we're doing this we want to share the love of God with people and we want them to be blessed and help meet a practical need for them and so that's what we got to do in the pharmacy so got to help in a lot of different areas um, as you can see but I think one of the most special to me this picture on the end is a um, picture of me with Pastor Renalyn um, and I got to know several of the pastoras that are that were from Lighthouse that have now gone and started these different churches in the Philippines um, on this trip I got to know them a lot better because when we moved to Hong Kong um, all of them had already moved back and uh, before that prior to that and so we never had met them face to face before and so we would hear stories over the last several years and see the pictures from the trips and it'd be exciting and we thought that's awesome but we'd love to know those people for ourselves and meet them face to face and got to meet them briefly when they came last year for the anniversary um, the church anniversary in the fall but didn't really get to um, spend a lot of time with them and get to know them and so we were so excited to as part of this trip to just be able to spend time with them we got to know them got to um, get familiar with each one of them hear some of their stories get to work with them day in and day out we worked with pastor Lorena a lot at registration she is a go-getter and she can solve any problem that comes along and she was really awesome to work with as well and so I was just really blessed to get to spend time with them get to be in the culture um, with them and in their country and just to experience all of that and so my encouragement to you would be that if you've never gone on a trip or joined a trip you should you should go along and see and feel and experience um, what it's like and what they're doing and what's going on in the Philippines because it's really a special and a really neat experience so thank you for the opportunity all right good morning everybody you look good this morning. Yeah, yeah. I bet you woke up and said, "Oh, I, I get to live with Jesus," and it just made you radiate just the the goodness. So, so it was an honor, Pastor Jennifer, Pastor Renee, to be able to go on the the trip. We really enjoyed it. Um, God really um, made Himself known as as the the pastors and the church is already there um, doing the work, and the, a lot of uh, legwork was done before we were able to get there. Um, but but we believe that God was glorified in many people's lives, and uh, I got to work with Pastor Lorena quite a bit with uh, setup um, towards the beginning, and um, so we were hanging these uh, these uh, big tarps to uh, to bring shade for the people who are waiting for registration, and um, and so you know in the midst of that I got to work with some of the local people. And what I love about working with people that are not from where I'm from is you get to learn little tricks about ways that different people do things. And, um, and it was awesome. I mean, the guy, you know, he doesn't wear shoes. And uh, he's climbing on the side of this house and he's hanging this thing. And, and just some of the, the, the ways that he was working, it taught me uh, of how I would want to do it better whenever I... Um, go places and um, it was, it's amazing to be able to learn from people who do things a different way and you can see him right there on the right um, the the guy in the middle he represents the the people that um, that I would see whenever I was in the midst of serving and working and ushering people to go from point A to point B um, but throughout um, just the whole mission God would put specific people in my heart and, and he would just like highlight them and say you know, you just need to pray for them, and, and my my heart just wanted to pray for them and wanted to to see God meet their needs. And uh, I believe that God works like like that so many times, um, whether we're on a mission trip or whether we're just going uh, from home to work or from work back home. Um, just take your time to to stop and watch people and to look and to see. Okay. Um, what would God have me do in this situation? What would Jesus do if he were in my shoes right now? And I believe a lot of times um, Jesus would pray for people and he would see somebody in need 
and he'd say, okay, Father, um, well, Jesus can help them, but, you know, I may say, Father, I can't do anything to um, necessarily help this person, what needs they have, but you know what they need. And so um, just to have that opportunity to, to pray and intercede for people like that as they waited. And then this, uh, this picture here um, was at uh, when we were near Pastora Rowena's church. And uh, we had a busy morning, but then my afternoon was very slow. I didn't have a whole lot that I was assigned to do. And so I would bounce around and help with eyeglasses or uh, would help with the children and uh, just kind of go from place to place. And then I felt like, man, I'm not really being being used by God right now, you know. I'm just like, like I'm, I'm tired. And sometimes whenever you're not doing anything, then it just makes you more tired. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to go back to the registration area and I'm going to sit down and, and then we're going to leave. And so, um, and so as I walked around the corner, I saw this young man standing there and... Um, uh, I just said hello, and I, I kept walking, and then I just knew the Holy Spirit was telling me, go back and talk to him. And so I was like, okay. And so I, so I went back and started a conversation. Turns out he's actually a Christian. He uh, leads worship in his church. Um, but he, was just, he wasn't even there for the medical mission. He was there because his sister lives in that community. And so he was just standing there because uh, he was you know, getting ready to take a taxi back to um, the city. And so uh, I was able to talk with him for half an hour and just hear his story, um, hear the, the struggles that he was going through, and be able to pray not just for him, but pray with him as he was already a brother in the Lord. And uh, just the, the power of agreement in prayer um, that the Lord says that we can have, uh, we experienced that in that moment. And, uh, and I believe that um, the Lord had me there for a reason, and um, I believe that God received glory through um, the work of the church and um, it was amazing to be able to work with us pastors and to see their passion and their zeal for the Lord and um, again thank you uh, Lighthouse for allowing us to be a part of that and we give God the glory for um, the great things he has done. Some don't have pictures, but they still went to the medical mission. And Jesselita, why don't you come? Jesselita has been such a blessing to us. No, you come here. You don't stay there. We want to see you uh, uh, radiate the, the, the shine for Jesus. This lady has helped us a lot in advance, even when she was here. She made contact with the mayor of town. And actually, the mayor of San Fernando and the team there, they helped us a lot. They supplied transport, they fed us our lunch, they helped us a lot with our, because of uh, Jessica. This is her home, her hometown. Yes, yeah, so go ahead. Sorry. Uh, good morning. Sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> now, when I heard uh, that we'll be having a medical mission in the Philippines and also in my place, I was very excited at that time and also very sad. I was excited, of course, because medical mission will be in my place, in my hometown. And was very, very sad because I know for sure that my employer won't allow me because of I have very busy employers, and I have two kids, and I really don't have a chance. I know my, my percentage is about 20%, so I don't expect that. But we have a great God, and God will make a way, whatever, how, how hard the situation is, He will make a way for us. Uh, before, I was there in the medical mission then I was asking to God why I'm here why he allowed me to he allowed me to join that medical mission but and after the medical mission because I stayed in the registration so I'm sorry because I wasn't able to take I was only have a few pictures or photo because I don't have really time to take a photo because if I take a photo then I have to stop the registration because <laughs> I, I stayed under registration of Morel Tech and 
Ilocanos. Because I was be able only to go home for five days. I only have a few days. At least my employer allowed me to, to join the medical mission. And then I was asking to God that why he allowed me to join the medical mission. And after the mission, it was Tuesday because Wednesday I was not be able to join it because I need to be back at Hong Kong at 17. So only Monday and Tuesday I, I helped with the mission then. After the, maybe afternoon and Tuesday, I asked God why he allowed me to join the mission and what his purpose. And then after that and then and God answered me that God made me realize how blessed I am having him in my life and how blessed I am with the things he has done for me and for everybody of us and all the things that he gave it to me compared to all the people that I've met that came to me during the registration and have a lot of people that still they don't know God. So. I was very, very blessed because I have him in my life. He helped me, everything that he made things, all, all things for me is very easy. Whatever, how hard, I mean, how hard the situation is, just keep on praying and praying. And then he gave me a verse, I mean, l later. Uh, and then he opened a gate, uh, I mean, he opened a door for me. This is the way to evangelize my family because he showed me the way how will I open I mean how will I start with my family but he allowed me to join the mission because now for that five days he stayed in the Philippines all of my relatives because we live in one compound nobody all my family and then they just came to me and talked to me what is that and can I, where is your church so I was be able to share the word of God to them, even, even, even if it is a little only, but because I don't really have time to stay with them for a long time, so I just talk to them, and maybe next time, or maybe when I have a longer time of vacation, then I will start evangelizing all my family circle, and I open my, during that time, I open the Bible, and he give me words. <laughs> he gave me a verse. I'm sorry, I have to. <laughs> it's in 2 Corinthians 9.13. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, men will praise God for the visions that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity to sharing with them and with everyone else. So this is the verse he gave me and maybe this is also the way I want to evangelize my family. And maybe next time when I go home, then it will be the start for all my family. Okay. With the Savior. Thank you for this wonderful testimony. Sister Rose, are you ready? Yes? No, not there. You can give, you can give a brief one, but from here. I, I can stand beside you if it gives you more courage, if you want to. But I think you can do it. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm not a public speaker, so uh, please be with, be with me. Right. It's just, it is a great blessing uh, for me to join the medical missions, and it's an eye-opening for me. Um, it was... Right. I don't really... I just said, I asked the Lord. I said, Lord... What do you want? Why did you brought me here? What do you want me to do? So I've been I've been asking that on and on and on my my head. Then I I was talking with Ida on the way to um, La Union, and he was she was telling me, oh maybe you what do you what are you going to do? And I said, well I can do anything. I might be going to the children's ministry. Then she said to me, oh yeah, I think um, Brother Stephen and, and that Rena are in charge for that. Then I said, okay, um, I might be talking to them. Then she said to me, 
no, you have to go and talk to Pastor Renee. And I said, okay. Then about while we were talking, it's sad there, and then she said to me, oh, maybe you're going to the medical, uh, to the dental um, group. And I said, what are they going to do in dental group? Then she was telling me about this, this. And I said, oh, no, I can't. I can't do that. <laughs> so, I can, so I just said in short, I said, I can do anything apart from that. That's why I said, well, talk to Pastor Rene tomorrow. So I went to, and then the, 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 the next day, I, I spoke with Pastor Rene. And I was expecting that he said, yeah, okay, oh, Pastor Rene, what do you want me to do? And then he said to me, I'm like, oh, there are lots of things that you can do. And, and I said, yeah. Yeah, so I was so I was so happy inside me, and then she, he said, right. But since you were um, roommate with one of the doctor um, dentists, <laughs> <laughs> she said to me, yeah. He said to me, oh, since you are roommate with uh, Doctor Ruby, why didn't you go and help to the dental? And I just said, oh, there. I was going really. I mean, in that morning when I was chatting with you, I was going to say no. But I just like, oh, okay, yeah, so I did pray. I said, I said, Lord, I haven't really inside me, I was just quiet. I don't even go and talk to people because I just felt like I'm worried about it. First of all, I got lots of baggage over myself with my, um, how would say, my nature. I don't really like to see blood. And also, I don't, want, I don't, any, I don't know anything about medical, I mean, like, all those uh, prescriptions, like the medicines about all this. No, I don't want to see all those uh, teeth or anything. So <laughs> I just, yeah, so I just like, hold on. I, I pray hard for that one. And then my roommate, uh, uh, Dr. Ruby, I just said to her, I don't like to see blood. I'm be, I'll be scared. Then he, she said to me, oh, really? So I said, okay. So we prayed, to, we prayed inside there in the room, and then, the, and then we, we went. So I said, Lord, I don't really know it. I thought, I just, this is a big challenge for me. So um, when we were in there, so I just like, okay. So brother, um, sister, one of the Canadian clothes, yeah. She was so organized. She's very, very calm. She was telling me, oh, this is what you're going to do, this, this, this. So you're going to be in the sterilizing. And yeah, so I don't even know how to remove the serene. Just to take the, I, I know my husband is already doing some injecting every day, but I can't, I don't even look. But it's like, oh, she's, she's telling me, and then this blood, the, if there's a blood, you have to do this, this. So I'm just like, what am I going to do? Otherwise, like, yeah, well, sorry for telling me this, my saliva is going to be on and on. So I have to, I have to chew some chewing gum just to, to de do myself inside me. And, but inside me, really, Lord Jesus, Lord, help me to do this. I can't do this. If I, if just, it's my my own self I can't do it at all but I have to, uh, you already put me here so I know that you have a purpose for me in the, doing this so yeah after that so it was actually it was okay yeah they've been a bit they were teasing me like oh so I did manage up for the whole day in Pangasinan but yes it is an eye-opening for me that uh, um, doing this really that whatever you know we are there for the body of Christ and giving the sharing the love of God and we have all different assignments like different groups in it I didn't even able to to go and chance to uh, to go every group because uh, I was already stuck in there you know if just by myself I can't do it two doctors are doing it or three and just like oh they're again yeah you took to do this but really I just in short as a kind of um, is an eye-opening eye that we are doing there for the body of Christ. This is the activity of the Lord, and that's what I, I put inside me, enabled for me to do the, the task that she gave it to me. The next day, again, is even more worse when I was scared <laughs> because they said, oh, you've been promoted, Rose, and that's what they said. <laughs> so you're going to do some medicine. So I have to read the prescription, what the doctor's giving to me. So Dr. Um, Willard and the, the husband and wife, they were saying, uh, so Dr. Ruby was uh, explaining to me, you make, to be, make it sure that you have to do this, read it, how many medicines are you going to give, and then write it down in here, write the name, and just like all this, and the have to do this one. So one of Dr. Willard, 
uh, uh, his handwriting. I can't really read it. <laughs> so I said, well, I think doctors, um, uh, you know, I said, that's not the one. So I went, I, I feel a bit embarrassed to go and ask him. So I asked Dr. Ruby. So because we get along it's uh, it's all very well. So I said, so like, oh, what's this one? What's that mean? So what this? And then she, so she explained it to me. So I was able to do that one, but to the glory of God. So likewise said, I can't really do it. You take this for me. So what I'd say in it, it uh, really is that it was a blessings. It is a great blessings. A great, I really, really enjoyed it. That if you go there by yourself, that without praying, I don't think you have that joy. So that sharing the word of God, um, I managed to share the word of God in Ilocano. I was a little girl that's scared to go and pull her, her teeth. And when they said, they pulled me, they're like, oh, you have to pray because they, they, they asked her, well, do you speak Tagalog? And then the, the child doing like this, that was in Pangasinan. And she had like four inside and outside, just like one of the doctors was just teasing, like, oh, sh you're a shark. <laughs> but actually, she was, uh, she was uh, able to, I, I prayed for her, but it is, you know, when you're not really using your mother tongue anymore, it's, there is a little bit of like, you know, but I think I managed to pray for her. So it is great pleasure, and I really thank the Lord that I, I, I was part of this one. And I, I, I even said to Dr. Rubella, like, yeah, if you're going to do it like next year, and I think hopefully the Lord's going to give me time to, uh, you know, join. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Uh, when 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 I went to Payatas, it was actually uh, a very quick decision because Cathay Pacific they have their own promotional fair to the Philippines. <laughs> so I figured, okay, I haven't been to the mission, and that's always been burning in my heart to join the mission, but uh, it just was so difficult in a way for me to find the time to do it. Then the opportunity came, I grabbed it, and one day in Payatas for me was probably very, very, would become very, very memorable. Before we went to Payatas, Payatas has always been part of me because on our way to Montalban, where we live, we would pass through Payatas back in 1977 when I was around 11 years old. Through there, the dirt road, you would smell the stench of the garbage. It was awful, really. And when you get in a, in a traffic jam, oh, <laughs> you, just wish, you just wish you're not there at all. And then when you stop the jeepney, all flies go inside your jeepney. That was, that's my impression, that was my memory of Payatas. So, when we were there, thinking, okay, this probably might be a humbling experience for me. And then when I got there, I did not realize how, how it was to be there. Uh, the, the people, you know, uh, Sister Adela and the family, they were t telling us before, there was even a situation where they, they would eat under a uh, mosquito net because of the amount of flies that would swarm around them while they're eating. You leave a spoon or a, uh, a fork outside, you won't see the spoon. You see the fly over the spoon and it's just the shape of the spoon that you'd see. That is how bad it was. Okay. So when I got there, it was really an expectation of will I be surrounded with rubbish or would I be surrounded with smell? It wasn't as bad. Okay. But I wouldn't bring my wife there. <laughs> It wasn't as bad because uh, it was a nice day when we were there. It wasn't raining. If it was raining, that would have been really worse. But the beauty for me was that Lorena took me out of being an usher 
into sharing the gospel to the people around there. So I figured, Lorena, you brought me into that be ready in season and in out of season. So I was there sharing the gospel with the people. But you know, the easy part I, that I found was when you're there in a mission, when you're there showing your concern for them, uh, it is easier to bring that opening into sharing the gospel. Uh, what we've actually, what I realized is that we're here to take care of your physical needs as God understands your physical needs. But we are here more than your physical needs because we are here for your spiritual needs. I like the strategy that the church has actually put together. When you register, you don't go to your medical need first. They bring you to the counseling area. So you're forced to listen to the gospel before you actually get your medical attention. So, in short, okay, I have to listen because I need my eyes checked or I need my tooth pulled. So it was actually a very good strategy. And this is Jennifer, when they're already checking the eye, they'll make you read the Gospel of John. <laughs> so, is it clear? It's not clear. Or try this another one, and so on and so forth. So, for me, I'm thinking I should have joined Iloilo because it was... <laughs> no, honestly, uh, it would have... It was, many of you said, it was an eye-opener. Uh, truly for me, it was an eye-opener. Uh, and somehow I wish I should have joined much earlier in the beginning. Just imagine, I'm a Filipino. Canadians come to my country to do medical mission. It burdens me that I'm not there. But now I think uh, it's, it's a good opportunity not only for me, maybe for every one of us who could actually join and have a quick taste of how the Lord moves in this kind of situation and you'd end up renewed you'd end up glorifying God with the, with the experience amen. amen the Bible says I can do all things through the one who gives me strength and we look at these situations and we look at these these people and you've heard some of the things but you know you've heard it presented in such a way that we can laugh at it a little bit it was it was not easy there were times it was very very hard it was incredibly hot every day um, what Chris was saying in Payatas the last day with the slum I, I, truly where we sat it was in the lane that went the, the smell was terrible and then that afternoon, as, as it did rain and it downpoured, uh, Amy, show the last slide in mine. Um, that gives you, this was our group, this was just a picture and you're not really seeing the worst of it. Um, we were trying to do eye exams, so there are two eye exams here, and then RJ, who's one of the youth from uh, Pastora Amor's church, he was trying to help and he was holding an umbrella on the side to keep the old lady from being rained upon and it was pouring rain and from the, the in the kids area it was just a, a flood of really dirty water and we already knew what the water was was in the water what we did know because all around where we were sitting there was dog poo sorry to say that dog everywhere there were flies everywhere it was just this all the time and then this flood of terrible water comes rushing through over our feet underneath the table as it went by and it was hard and we listen to these things and we look at these pictures and we think I cannot do that and you're right in our own strength we cannot do these things we can't go we don't want to go and we think it's too hard for me to do but what we have found is this when God speaks to our hearts we can do anything that God speaks to our hearts to do. One of Paul's prayers in 2 Thessalonians 1.11, we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of his call. And the pictures that you see, and if you gave, and if you prayed, and if you went, you were living a life that was worthy of the call of God. May he give you the power to accomplish 
all the good things your faith prompts you to do. We do not have it in ourselves to do these things. But he gives us the power to do what he calls us to do, brothers and sisters. Are we afraid? Yes, we're afraid. Are we reluctant? Yes, we're reluctant at times. But can we do it with his power and with his presence? Yes, we can. Jesus has returned to heaven. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for you and for me. And if we don't go, Jesus is not in that slum in Piatus. If we don't go, he's not on the mountaintop in Bagungbong. If we don't go, then somewhere in Mongkok or in Wan Chai, Jesus is not there because Jesus goes through us. He expresses his love through us. In the, in the offices where you are, in the homes where you work, on the streets where you walk, when you go in the power of Jesus, you take Jesus with you, you represent Jesus, you go with his love, you go in his power, and you share what he would share if he were walking these streets, if he were there. We look at these things and we think, it's too hard, I can't do this, and yet, there are sisters from this church who have left what was an easier life. Sometimes we think, well, you know, it's easier, it's easier to, it's hard here in Hong Kong. May I tell you something if you're working at, uh, domestically here in Hong Kong? I can tell you something right now. It's harder in Payatas. It's harder doing what they're doing. But they have answered the call of God. And when we look at them, and we listen to what God, the Holy Spirit, says to our hearts. We remember that Jesus set aside the glory of heaven. And he came to earth that you might hear the gospel, that I might hear the gospel, that we might have eternal life. And he has done this in our hearts and our lives. And he calls us to do the same thing. So that is why we went. That is why you prayed. That is why you gave. And brothers and sisters, it's not just in the Philippines. It's where we are now. If there's another medical mission, I encourage you to be part of the medical mission. In some way, pray, give, go. If there are other missions, pray, give, go. But if there isn't an outs outside, an external mission, we are here now. Are we in God's plan and in God's power and in God, with God's presence here in Hong Kong? Yes, we are, unless we're outside of the will of God, but I don't believe we are. And so where we are now, these things, please don't just say, okay, well, next time I'll do something like this. We're here now, and there are things that God calls us to do. For me, it was in the reading glasses. And what do I know about reading glasses? I know nothing except that I wear glasses. That's it. And what Google taught me. And what Google taught me. But before we went, we prayed. We really prayed. It's people's eyes. I don't want to mess up people's eyes, number one. And so I really prayed. And Ida, Sister Ida prayed as well. We really prayed. We don't want to mess up people's eyes. Number two, God, we only have these numbers of glasses but there are all these people that need glasses. Help us to help everybody get exactly the glasses that they need. That was the second prayer. But our third and our most important prayer was this. Lord, help us to show your love to these people in practical help and your love in salvation. These are the things that we prayed. And we saw God answer every single one of these prayers, far beyond what we could do. That picture that, that you just saw just a minute ago with that lady, this lady, she looks so angelic, doesn't she? She was tough. She was one of the, it was on the second day, and she almost started a riot in the reading glasses. She caused trouble in the line during registration. She got into the reading glasses. She was trying to get in front of people. She was impatient. She was rude. She was rah, 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 with everybody. She really, really was. And. I, what I want to say, and I think everybody else who's in the medical mission would say the same thing as well, God, I saw God do, do something in me, because those of you that know me and know me well, you know that a sweet, gentle personality is not really my personality. You know that. But God helped me. If the old Pastor Jennifer would have taken up a baseball bat and just whack, 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 whack. <laughs> I, I really mean that because she was so rude. 
and she was so ungrateful and she was so pushy and so demanding but the Lord helped me to give gentle and kind words and she settled down and she in the end and in the end she listened and she was responsive so that was the Lord and Christy helped as well oh I thank the Lord for Christy and the other thing that I saw was this God you know we think well it's got to be me I'm the one that has to do it but I saw a biblical principle that 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 fell into place during the medical mission there there was a whole process kind of of discipleship I was the one in the very beginning I always did the reading glasses the last time and then this time Ida took over and she was doing she was doing reading glasses while I was doing reading glasses and we had translators helping us but very quickly I saw God these people are at least as able if not more able than I am and they speak exactly the language and they don't need to translate so after a while I just step back and I let Christy do it and then in another place I let uh, I let somebody else do it as well and God really brought the right people so I saw that in the next pictures this lady in Bogongbong this was pastor uh, Rowena's church up on top of the, uh, sorry not church her home up on top of the mountain she was so happy to receive glasses so that she could read her Bible again. I, I, I want to ask you, what happens if you go a day or two without being able to read your Bible? We just feel dry inside, don't we? We feel like I've got to feed on the Word of God. We were able to help Christians with reading glasses who had not been able to read the Bible in two or three years just because they didn't have reading glasses. And the Word of God says that you and I are to do good to everyone especially to the household of faith and that verse came to mind as I looked at what happened during the medical mission as we were able to help Christians who couldn't read the Bible and had not been able to read the Bible for several years and now they were able to read the Bible and you'll see some other pictures this was one of the last nights in Iloilo and we were just praising God for the good things that he had done and then in the next one um, you heard Lauren say something about strengthening and, and you heard Pastor Renee talking about encouraging these missionaries who are back in the Philippines and here's a picture a lot of you don't know her but this one this lady is Edith she used to be one of our Bible teachers here at Lighthouse she was one of the teachers of uh, foundations one and foundations two as well and then God called her back and her life has been so so difficult in the Philippines she's been taking care of her family her mother who was paralyzed uh, uh, or blind I think and then her sister who has dementia and pulls her clothes off and pulls off her her diaper and push and puts things everywhere and and Edith has been taking care of her and yet God has called her to begin to minister to children and to young people and she's been working on her own and as we came in that afternoon she didn't even know that brother Mike and sister Alma were coming and others were coming and Adela also and this was one of the pictures we'll show you videos later this was one of the pictures as she saw lighthouse people coming to come along beside her to encourage her to be with her for just a short time she was so excited that she was jumping up and down and she was doing this <gasps> she could hardly talk and then she would see somebody else and then she would scream again and she would go run and she would hug them and it was for us we kind of think eh, you know what's the big deal but when you've been working on your own without support uh, I th if, if there had not been a medical mission God brought us to encourage these great women of God who are serving the Lord at great sacrifice praise the Lord that we got to be part of that this elderly lady over here was so so grateful and we told her after we helped her with the glasses um, that she she could not she was illiterate many of the people we we uh, helped were illiterate I think she but she was a, a seamstress and so she really needed the glasses for that and her life was so so hard and so we just told her and remember one of the prayers help us to show love we, we and we just told her we want you to know God loves you so much he brought us here and he had just the right glasses for you so that you could see again and she just began to weep and after that we had a chance to pray with her and Edith will follow up with her uh, and we already know there's going to be a lighthouse in Pangasinan and Edith looked at her she pointed to her house which is quite large and she said I don't even have to build this will be lighthouse church in Pangasinan so praise the Lord for that and then following this lady was a Christian look at the beautiful smile on her face it's a little bit dim I think this is in maybe in Payatas already uh, or maybe La Union I'm not sure 
and this one it was so encouraging. Some of the people that we helped with glasses were terribly ungrateful. They just picked up their glasses and walked off. <laughs> they really did. And so inside I thought, hmm. But it reminded me that Jesus himself gave what is more precious than glasses. And, they, and, and much of the world has, has not, is not grateful. And so, but this lady, it was so encouraging, when she received her glasses, she didn't even first say, oh, thank you so much. She immediately said, oh, thank you, Lord. In fact, it was this one or maybe one of the other ones. She told us, she said, when I heard that a medical mission was going to be here, I prayed, God, let there be reading glasses so that I can get reading glasses. And she said, you were the answer to my prayer boy, talk about making you feel flies, stink, dirty water. It's worth it. It's worth it. And this lady as well. We had opportunities. We had prayed, Lord, give us opportunities to pray for people. Touch our hearts because overall in the reading glasses, we, met, we helped a, more than 500 people. So there wasn't time to pray for everybody and not everybody wanted prayer. But we prayed, Lord, direct our hearts, touch our hearts. Who, who should we be praying for? And in the next uh, photo, you see some. You see some. Um, this lady, I'll tell you about this in just a minute. This lady, after we helped her with glasses, she looked at us and she said, I want you to overpray me. We thought, what? She said, I want you to overpray me. And then she said, I have no one who, is, who will pray for me. I have no one. I'm, I'm alone. And so we said, we'll pray for you. Here's the great thing. The young girl uh, was, it was Zenny's... Uh, Zenny's daughter, teenager, maybe tomorrow, maybe at your age or maybe a little bit younger than you. So this is a challenge for you too. And we said, okay, because she was speaking uh, Ilocano. And, she, and we said, okay, April Lynn, uh, you pray for her. So a teenager. She, we began to, we all prayed together. We gathered around. She began to pray for her. And as April Lynn prayed, tears began to fall on this woman's cheeks. And at the end of the prayer, she looked up and she said, and, and she said, I felt something in my heart when this young girl prayed. And then she said, the Holy Spirit has come into my heart. The, just like that, salvation came to this woman. And then she said, I want an Ilocano Bible. Can you get me an Ilocano Bible? Because I want to learn about Jesus. And so then we called Susan to come over so that Susan could go to her house because she was the, look at her, she was the younger person in the house. She was taking care of her deaf mother in the house um, who also came to the medical mission. And so we encouraged Susan, here is a good place for a Bible study. She was so grateful and she was so thankful. And then I ran and I got Pastor Renee because that day was a tough day. It was so hard that day. And I thought, Pastor Renee needs some encouragement. So I ran and got him. I said, Pastor Renee, you got to hear this. And so he came back and he, he said, he, after he heard, he said, this made my day. He was so very, very happy. But it was it's just so joyful. And, and I wanted to share these things with you because you're, you're part of it as well. It is not, oh, they're Filipino, I'm Chinese. They're Filipino, I'm African. They're Filipino, I'm, I'm Caucasian. We are part part of the family of God together. Amen. Amen. And then just a final one, a funny one. Ida was helping this lady. She loved helping the old, the old folks because they were so grateful. And she leaned over and she'd say, I don't want the young ones. Just give me the old ones. <laughs> she really did. And she had a special gift. She had a special gift for the old ones. She, I would look over. She'd be holding their hands and praying with them. And so uh, Sister Ida was seated here. I was seated here on the other side of the table. And this lady was getting her eyeglasses. She was in her 80s. And as soon as she put on the right glasses and they fit, she looked across the table and she said, Ah, there's an Americano. <laughs> so, so, I, we, I guess we, we, got her the, we got her the right glasses, right? <laughs> but, but that, as, as brother, that was me. <laughs> Um, but as Brother Chris said, actually what we used for the test was the Gospel of John. And uh, I know I have to stop, but this last one. This lady, also very thankful, this lady. When, she, when we got her the right reading glasses, she picked up the Gospel of John and we would let them read for about 10 seconds so that they could make sure the glasses were comfortable. And as she read, her voice began to crack. You know, you can tell when somebody is about to cry and you hear their voice. 
her voice, you could tell she was about to cry. Tears filled her eyes, and she just started reading. And she kept on and on and on. And she didn't want to stop. And I sort of tapped her on the shoulder, and she kept on reading. And finally, she put it down, and she looked at up, up at us with tears in her eyes, holding the Gospel of John, and she said, Na pintas, na pintas, which means beautiful, beautiful. And then she picked it up, and she started reading again. And she said, and after she read for a long time again, she put it down and she said, Maganda, it's good, it's beautiful. Brothers and sisters, you heard Stephen this morning as we began the worship and he read from Isaiah 52, 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those, are the feet of those that bring good news. If you prayed, your feet are beautiful this morning. If you gave, your feet are beautiful. If you went, your feet are beautiful. Amen. Amen. Time to close our service. This morning we've been inspired. There are more testimonies, but as Stephen shared in the first service, uh, maybe next week we can have. And myself, I did not share my highlights yet. But in the closing the service this morning, I want to encourage you that this today is Global Outreach Day this weekend. And this is what it is all about. We have received the good news of Jesus Christ. We are privileged, we have resources. We are here, the mother church, and many daughter churches are in the Philippines, and the work of God continues through us. At the end of the service, our ushers will have in the back some of these little leaflets here. This is just for you, a reminder of the basic of the gospel message, uh, of the privilege we have, the mission we are called, sin, Christ, faith, receiving Christ, and we would want to encourage you this week to be intentional. Global Outreach Day is that everyone can do something to reach someone. We all can do it. So why not this week, like we, we go every day, we do our routine, like the way, so this week don't do it. Pray and say, Lord, I want this week to be different. Intentionally, Lord, give me a divine appointment someone who is seeking someone who need to hear about you and lord help me to share give me the boldness give me the the the, the ability to connect and the a conversation and re relationship so that i can tell them that you love them i i can share something out of your love global outreach day is like use your creativity to do something out of your ordinary a cup of coffee a piece of cake uh, washing dishes visiting an hospital or whatever it is that you can do to reach someone out of your daily routine just break the routine and let god break it for you and all this so that's that's our request that's our request for you can you do that yeah, so at the, at the, as you go, go out, this is also to remind you to, to pray this week and be intentional in reaching out to people. We have one more thing we need to do at the end is to give a baptism certificate. But at, at, in closing, and we will continue a little bit this ne next week, but there are different uh, types of uh, testimonies of this medical mission. The first one is to help our daughter church to break through and grow. Number two is to bring support to our missionaries who are isolated and do the work of the Lord uh, continually. Number, two, two, number three is to, to have the joy of hearing and being there to, to connect with the people who, who do the sinner prayer and accept Jesus. Almost everyone who come to the medical mission, children or adults receive Jesus or do the sinner prayers because they all meet our missionaries and they all hear a very good presentation. When Pastor Jomar from the north came to join our teams, Pastor Jomar is such a gift to connect with people. Many, many of these people were crying just to listen to him. And, and I have some seven page of testimonies here with me that I collected this week, just uh, middle of the week until now, and more will be coming <coughs> of our missionaries who are telling stories of people that they led to the Lord and 
cancer patients and uh, hard hardened street kids uh, beaten by their mothers, like stories of individual people who received Jesus Christ this week. So, and the number four, which is not the least, this year uh, the medical mission is something we have never done in the past, is to invite many of the uh, best of our youth workers in many of the churches to come and join the medical mission for training them and that is something very I got some great great testimonies of these you know, youth workers how touched and how privileged they feel and how God is they have seen God using them just this week so anyway we, we are so happy about what God is doing through the medical mission but through the extension of that lighthouse brings an, an arm out, out outwardly and this is what we are called this is why we exist this is why G, uh, lighthouse has been established from the beginning if you remember the foundation of pastor steve sister mary brother philip this is exactly why lighthouse exists so we want to continue in the same way so don't be surprised if your pastors go on mission trip because this is our calling this is our heart we are not a burden on the church. The pastors pay their own, has been paying their own uh, fees to go to this mission, uh, medical missions. We just want to be there in the forefront, part of the revival that God is, is doing. And we always invite all of you to, to share and to be part of anything that we do.